Hello and welcome to the Learn Down Under Hangout. Thank you for joining us on this practically Christmas Eve discussion of The Spare Man. Matt, can you hold your book up? Because Matt was prepared. Look at that beautiful cover. It's by Mary Robinette Kowal. Um, and yeah, this was a general pick. So we often, we usually go around Robin and have everyone pick something. But this time we did a bracket and this was the final, the final book standing. So this was how we chose. Uh, so I guess we'll go around and we'll just kind of say our first initial thoughts. Uh, first part of the hangout will be no spoilers and we'll give an alert whenever we start talking about spoilers. Okay, so Sarah, what do you think? Sorry, you have the and everything. I apologize. No, it's all right. I'm just a little chase. Um, oh, look, I, like, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, like enough that I did it twice, but, but also because I felt like it's like the classic whodunits. Once you kind of get to the end, then you do want to kind of go back and re-listen to it. I was actually doing the third time just because I was like, well, I need to fill in time before we have a hangout. <laughs> I don't want to start something new. Um, I did the audio book because I will always do the audio book when it's uh, Mary Robinette Powell because she's just, well, she just kicks ass. Um, I, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I love this, uh, the setting, <clears throat> uh, the whole idea. Like it's your classic um you know, um, locked in a room, you're stuck in a setting. I, it's you know, it, it's there's there's so much pulling from Agatha Christie here. You know, mm. with the with, which I which I really like. And what I love is that we did this for the Christmas pick because um, to for me for some reason like whodunits are a real Christmas like the Christmas oh, movies are <laughs> that come out. You know, so um, I just yeah, look, I I really enjoyed it. I don't think it's as good as. Um, her Lady Astronaut series, like the the la, the final one, but mm -hmm. like this is yeah. a standalone, and I think also this would be a really good introduction for people yeah. into the writing. And yeah, you know, you're not having to kind of have an alternate history; it's just like a set in the future. Mm -hmm. There's enough kind of you know back um, throwbacks to it. Um, so look, I yeah, I had a really good time. I have a lot of questions, some scientific, some like plot devices that I don't think I got or understood that I need to ask the group about um and also Fantine's awesome and I have like so many of her quotes <laughs> written down like uh, of the things that she said um so that was really cool so that's me awesome um Kirsten um I really enjoyed it um murder mystery is not my jam so it has to be really good for me to enjoy a murder mystery and I did um I really also enjoyed the setting um I really really liked all the cocktails <laughs> no, like I liked all the references to cocktails especially because it was like oh I know that cocktail and then the whole scene where she's, <clears throat> she's um talking to the guy in the bar and she, he's making her a martini do, and, and yeah. he starts to shake the martini I was like having a meltdown with her as, as I was kind of like oh my god I, I love that a, a character is as much of a snob about cocktails as I am um so yeah I loved that um didn't pick the ending, but I can never pick the ending in these kind of books. That's why I don't normally read them because I suck at them. But I really enjoyed it overall. So I'll get into more details later. Uh, Nay. Um, I really enjoyed it. I too, like Sarah, listened to the audiobook because I will always listen to Mary Robinette Cowell as an audiobook. I, as soon as I found out we were doing Spam Man, I was like, man, nah, audiobook. Now I own it. <laughs> Even if I wasn't going to make it. And I wasn't sure I was going to. Um, I really enjoyed it. I always enjoy her books. Um, I don't know that I liked it more than the Lady Astronaut books, but it was still very, very good. And I gave it five stars. And that's what I told Karina, that I think she will really enjoy it and that she should also listen to it. So she has started. She just hasn't finished it. Um, but I very <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really enjoyed it. I'm glad we I'm glad that this is what we chose. And I'm being told off because I didn't vote for it, but I'm still in the even vote for it. <laughs> Poor darling. Sorry. That's okay. Yes. Um I really I enjoyed all the characters' development and sort of how we sort of get to know them throughout the book and loved Gimlet. 
Exactly <laughs> what may be my favourite character in the book. <laughs> what a great name for a dog too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, Lisa. Um, yeah, I'm. I am still reading the book, but I'm two thirds of the way through. I think Re- I'm rather enjoying it. Uh, I'm feeling a little nitpicky about some of the bits here and there, but um, but it. I do. I also really enjoying the character development, and I. I am really enjoying the audio book, but I think that might be partly why I haven't finished it because I've been audio booking it a bit slowly uh, instead of just reading it um but yeah the audiobook is is very good um yeah uh my favorite character would be a toss-up between Gimlet and Fontaine <laughs> so that would be tricky for me and I'm also am enjoying uh yeah I'm very much enjoying tying the cocktail recipes to, and their titles uh with the um the storyline is really cool mm-hmm. so yeah yeah no I'm, I'm definitely it's, it's a good read yeah one. Um, she. Um, yeah, so like it's a bit of a mixed bag for me. I really love her writing. Um, I, the thing I mainly mean that I really loved this book was actually in the second half and slowly ex- um, increasingly exposed at the end. Um, so I can't talk about it all. Um, but I didn't like the setting. I really hate cruise liners and the cruise industry. It actually um, repeatedly made me feel revolted um, just hearing about the setting, the background things, and it was enough to make me want to rage quit the book four or five times. It's not based on the quality of the writing. It's the accurate descriptions of the lifestyles that just made me want to set fire to shit in space. Yeah. That's so, fascinating. So I love her no writing. No clue that you struggled um, that much. One of the characters <laughs> I liked. Um, but, like, um, it's very hard to listen to because, yeah, smash the you know, smash the state, like seize the means of production, whatever. Even in international space borders. Okay, Matt. It's me. Yes, I, as we know, oh, I can't hold it up. Oh, I can hold it up. It's working. It's because of... your face is in there too, I think. That's why. Yeah, it's like a oh, safe space. <laughs> um, yes, I did not have the audio. I have, in fact, never read or listened to uh, an audio that MRK has done. Um, and that's just because I deal better with mm. reading yeah. books than listening to them. Um, but I should actually get around to listening to some of her stuff just so I can hear what she actually sounds like because I hear good things about her narration. Um, yeah, I had a real good time. Uh, I do quite like Who Dance. Um, it's not my favourite genre genre but I do like a good one so this was nice and something a bit different from um the late astronaut series obviously still those still hold a very special and dear place in my heart and it's going to take something very impressive from her to sort of top those I think but um I yeah I had I had a good time with this um I don't really have any um strong opinions to to share this early on so uh although i will say i too enjoyed the um the cocktail chapter names as well and sort of like deciphering what they're actually talking about um and i don't know if kirsten did you have you had your go yet yes were you listening to me at all they had the <laughs> no i was doing what you do in tuning you out um <laughs> But the um, you said something to me. You're like, oh, Tesla, she's just like me. She's a real cocktail snob. And it's like mm-hmm. when they're talking about like, this is not my gin. Oh, man, the gin? I, I was like, no, not the good gin. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes, uh, I, I, I enjoyed this a lot. Um, all right, I think I still haven't gone. So um, I really enjoyed it. I listened to it. Bang straight off when it first came out. I had pre-ordered the audiobook. I was very excited. Um, and then I re-listened to it just before we had the hangout because the book did come out over a year ago at this point. Mm. Um, yeah. Just because I did I remembered basic thing like certain things. I remember what the big reveal was and and all of that, but I, I knew it was more complex than just the one big reveal. Like there were other things going on. 
um, that were important to also that big reveal. So I decided to go back to her and re-listen to it again. I, I'm glad I did because I did pick up on stuff that I didn't necessarily notice the first time because the first time I read it, I was all like, that's a clue, that's a clue. I bet that's a red herring. And I was really like focused, hyper-focused on that. Whereas this time I got to enjoy a lot more and kind of absorb a lot more about that, about the the character development and all that. So I was glad I did that. Um, I thought it was very interesting. Some people were are saying that you felt the um the, the other like murder mystery kind of lockbox murder mystery that she did up on the moon with um what is it the relentless moon that one the spy on the moon um that that, that you liked that one more and I think I'm in agreement however I was uh, I was thinking about it as everyone was speaking her her approach to writing that was very different to her approach to writing this one so um the way that she approached writing this murder mystery was very much the Agatha Christie as in she didn't know who the who the person was mm-hmm. until she got to the end she literally just pantsed it the whole way through and she had and so she was saying she had to sometimes go back and change things mm-hmm. to then make it flow the rest of the way because she didn't know who the who the person was at the end whereas with relentless when she had it set out who was who you know who was the key players and stuff like that so maybe that might mean i wonder if that had something to do with it um Particularly because I think the first time I went through it, I was like, I picked up the red herring pretty early on, but the rest of it, I was like, I don't know who this is. And I thought it was kind of fun. And then the second time I read read it, I thought, mm, I feel like there's some, some like jogs in the, in the story arc that don't necessarily make sense. And so I was wondering if that's why maybe they didn't flow as much because they weren't pre-planned, which a lot of her writing tends to be very pre-planned and very researched and very thought out because of the type of stuff that she does. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I had a good romp both times, and I'll totally listen to it again. Like, I'll, I'll totally keep reading it. It's got lots of reread for me. Um, yeah. Okay, so that was initial thoughts. Anyone have any burning things they want to talk about straight up or not, like, before we get too far into I think the something we could talk about that's safe for Lisa mm-hmm. is I'd like to talk about the ship itself and the science mm-hmm. behind it because okay. some of it I found hard to visualize which is where I'm like is Matt coming because Matt can help me with this and Shig said that he can help me with this as well because there were bits like trying to understand the transit rings I couldn't quite get that I kind of understood like I understand that that the I mean thank god for Project Hail Mary so I kind of understand a lot of the you know things being under constant thrust and that type of idea so you got constant thrust to push you back and then the centrifugal force so I I got that but there were things like there was a dis- description of the transit rings that I didn't understand and the staircase which mm-hmm. she spent some time on and I was like I still don't know what this thing looks like so I wondered if anybody else had any thoughts because there were some really cool cool ideas mm-hmm. um but I, I, I just wanted to yeah you know, I thought this was Lisa safe territory because it's not spoilers or anything yeah my, my physics it? brain was buzzing a little oh sorry did you Oh, sorry, I was just going to say, did you see in the PDF where all the cocktail recipes were? There's a picture of the lab, yeah, yeah, yeah. what it looks like. Right. Yeah, yeah. But that's oh, only that's, 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 that's only like one, that's like, I need, yeah, but there's a top I need more than this. Well. I'm sure there's a yeah, top yeah, down. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 the the oh, that yeah. one, yeah, the one at the bottom of the page. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. If yeah, you but go like, to the very end of the audio book, she does kind of explain how the different gravity levels work. Mm-hmm. And she also talks about how, realistically for the gravity levels to work there would have to be much bigger distance in between yeah. them. and like when they're on the stairs and they're like oh this is the um lunar level and that's the mars level it's like actually you wouldn't be able to see very well from that level to that level mm. if you made them far apart enough. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it wouldn't work but she's like well yeah. to make the plot work i had to do that so i did it yeah no <laughs> i i remember that i just couldn't like there was a lot of time spent on the transit ring and i was like how the transit rings worked and they were like and i still just i kind of was like i don't don't I think understand a lot of the science coming. was this <laughs> where she was like right. just wibbly wobbly it it's fine yeah yeah it's, yeah, it's sciencey yeah. enough without actually being sciencey so she was mm, she yeah. fudged the numbers a bit so, I yeah actually, yeah I, I understood how the, the I, I I mean I from the physics you know I understand how the how the spin works to create artificial gravity and the Coriolis effect. The issue I had was when mm. the captain quite early was announcing uh, we're still accelerating um, and then we're gonna you know accelerate for this long and then we're gonna start decelerating and I'm like 
in the direction that they're oriented for that to be happening, they would feel it. They'll have to flip. Like they do the flip. He said they flip feel, flip. They feel the acceleration yeah. as well. Like they wouldn't. Yeah. That's yeah. not the direction that they're oriented mm -hmm. on well, the That's rings. how it works in the expanse, right? They just accelerate it like 1G. So, and then the ship is like, if you're going this way, you're actually facing yeah. that way. Down yeah. is backwards. Like, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that so was what then, I wasn't. Was it actually constant acceleration or was it increasing yeah. acceleration? Because they did like, mention constant, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I, then I misunderstood. Yeah, because that's and why it's I was not, like, it's not a 1G like increasing acceleration, experience. it's not going to work. No. Mm. The They're constant acceleration going. was for yeah. um, lunar gravity. Mm. That was oh, yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. And he did would actually add to the, the Coriolis place. effect, I imagine. Yeah, yes. yeah. and that's why they have the different routes. Yeah, decelerating, yeah. they'll actually get a reverse. The Coriolis effect will switch direction. Mm. Good point. She didn't mention that, but that's a really good point. No, um, the captain I mean, does mention at the halfway point they will do a flip. flip. Yeah, because yeah. she, right. she, she okay, called so it the technical point. name of the flippy poo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. we are going to do a very technical name of the flippy poo. See, I, can't, <laughs> yeah. I can't get flip and burn out of my head. Mm. Oh right! Well, I like I like the Icelandic burn. captain saying it's the flippy poo time. That's like I yeah, like well, that's 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 very, very like one of the yeah. things I liked the description of um, was the the elevator and stairs that connect the the different rings together mm. and how the angle of the stairs change as you go. That's the bit. That, can you explain that the, to me? wrote that down because I didn't understand when she was saying it out like because I yeah, yeah. So if you, as long, if you as, long walking... as in that one we don't talk about anything that happens on the stairs because that is yep. up where just gonna describe oh, it. Yeah. I don't know how it works. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if you if you had a consistent angle of the stairs going down because yeah. grav because the centrifugal force is simulating gravity it change. You, you, it would make you feel like you are you are about to go down and out at the same time yeah but by yeah. angling the stairs like this as you go you're kind of ending up if you start off like that by the time you get to the bottom stair you're actually like this and so that angle does that at the same rate that so, gravity changes oh, so, you're so that you always that the, feel like down is down so are you saying that the stairs don't have a rise and fall like this they, they do have a rise have and fall slopes but they have more like they're on slopes to them is that they, what you're saying? So that you're falling as each, you go step down. Each stair would have a normal fall. Each yeah. stair, stair would have a normal fall of itself, but then yeah. over a larger distance mm. that actually curves. So each, right. each one would so be slightly the staircase offset. doesn't go down like that. The staircase comes down like this. Yes, like, correct. The staircase right. is curved. It right. goes oh, in a curve, okay. yeah. yeah. That's right, that is the bit I couldn't yeah, understand because it sounded like each step was curved and yeah. that's the bit that I was like going, is yeah, it, right. it, it yeah, yeah, yeah. curved as it goes no, down? The stair, like, the staircase. I, which I sounds really had, beautiful. I got confused with one thing. Now, this is, this is, this is, I think, like, this This is the second death. It's way early on, so before Gimlet goes missing. So there is someone, spoilers to anyone who's watching and hasn't done the book at all, uh, fair warning, who um, fall or who somehow, we don't know how, falls off from the lunar level and we see them fall. And there's the, yeah, there's the question of what caused the, the falling. But people are seeing them fall from different levels because she's on the, ter like um, Tesla's on the Terran level, someone and other people are up on the lunar level, et cetera, et cetera, whichever direction they're, yeah. And I always understood that these were rings that were separate, like tubes, and so I couldn't understand how it's, I mean, I, I get that if you were on a cruise ship and yeah, you're inside and you're looking out in the great hall. Like. Yeah. So, it, okay. So it's that she's going, she, this person. I know you're right. So how does that person, are they falling down? The yeah. I'm like, am I, is, 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 is it? Because I thought that those, those down tubes were the, um, like the, not the maintenance, but the, the service corridors is what I thought. And then I thought the rings were for everyone else. And maybe that, maybe I misunderstood how it's designed in those. No, those no, you're things. right. Okay. No, no, you're right. I, mean, but, uh, I think that I that think area is like the big tube in the middle. Tube in the middle. That's. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, like the big tube in the and middle. Then the great every level, like, overlooks yeah. it. Yeah. So that makes sense. Tube in the middle yeah, and every level yeah. overlooks just, it. Yeah, I couldn't figure and out where would... they were all so they could all see it happening at once because, yeah, yeah that makes sense. Okay. Okay. Would be fun, I though? thought the tube in the middle, I thought the tube in the middle is basically where. The, the bridge, like the bridge is up in bridge here somewhere. The top. And, that, yeah. and that all of the, sorry, my cat is being, get, 
Hi, Liz. <laughs> um, I okay, yeah, because I had the same in my head. I could I could imagine it like a mall, right? But then yeah. you're right because it's like going if they're all connected with these things. How can you watch someone falling from here, like in, in a curve, yeah. like unless they're falling down the staircase? Because yeah, they would be completely separate. Mm. Yeah. So I mean, so maybe that's question. what happened. Maybe it is you. They were somehow in that center bit or not but I did get confused I can see that working now if they were all kind of on balconies that were look overlooking that center bit. Yeah. this person's yeah. not they're kind right. of they're moving by inertia I guess so it's like the ship is doing that around them as they fall. yes yes Does there was that but I, I couldn't figure out where where that could happen where like everyone that. could see them yeah that it was actually actually more rubble. like that way but yeah so they're all looking that they're all looking somehow inwards Mm. Inwards. Yes, but at the same time, they can. There are. There's also references to being able to see different people on different levels. Like Tesla can. Yeah. See, that this is why. Thinking. This is why I'm thinking it must. If it it must be in that center tube, somehow. Like they're all it must be. against that center center yeah. tube. Um, and then that person. Uh, uh, and the, that was what you said was the uh, uh, what do you call the author's prerogative to like. Yeah. Confess that. I mean, hand wavy, yeah. hand wavy like Naomi said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have to be yeah. Wooden, I, mean, I don't have mind to be even hand wavy. I was just confused yeah. how that worked if because she put a lot of effort into keeping most of the physics kind of there with bit specific areas where she on purpose chose to not follow. But. I think she was trying to make it like it was a bit of a like. It's like the grand hall. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the grand hall in a, in a, in a cruise ship. Levels, but it was like yeah. flat, like you could see everything kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, so that's no, that's totally, and that's totally things. the image I got. That's totally the image I got. I was just trying to reconcile that with the map. Figure that out, well, where yeah. is it? And that's a really good yeah. point because I didn't really twig in my head until that point that, oh, like I think in my head I had that the staircases and the um, um, elevators were like in a mall where you can see them. Like you can stand there and you can see if they're, they're like the spaces are there, you know, like it's almost like instead of it being, mm. sorry, I'm just going to turn on my um, um, office again so everyone can see me out because we'll done this. Right. Um, I kind of thought that instead of like there'd be these, like these would be there, but this actually would be um, like almost more like a triangle shape, if that mm. makes sense. Like, uh, you know, like it was almost like that. And then there were the the ways of, get, which weren't in tubes like that. They're actually, like you said, Matt, right? They're more like they're spirals going up. From what you're explaining, no, the, not the spirals staircase. like that. So I mean, they could like, they could have a spiral staircase. Not 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 yeah. as in a spiral like this, but that that they are all none of them. Yeah, like, they curve. Each of them curve, but not like, actually yeah. straight like this. They actually all kind of curve up, don't they? Like on a slight curve. Is that what you were saying? That's what I was imagining. I'm I'm confused. So on, on those <laughs> rings, on those rings, people's feet would be oriented outwards. Yes. Okay, so the back would be to the center, uh, to that center, to yeah, the main yeah. tube, and so then any anywhere except for the lunar area, which is getting its gravity from the constant acceleration. Mm -hmm. You're going to be feeling gravity in relation to the center of the ship pushing mm -hmm. outwards, okay, and so that's going to be down. One of those um, gravi gravity, you know, those those fairground rides that go round and round. Yeah, mm -hmm. same, yeah, same yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. 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 So. The reason I thought there was a top-down view is because I thought that was where you stood on that bit. So here you were standing on that. But are you telling me you're actually standing on the edge? The yeah, outward edge. Yeah. Your head would ah. be, facing. be pointing towards the centre tube. Yeah, of the tube. Point to the centre tube, and your feet are pointing out away from the ship. The centre. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. They must have uh, some something kind of like this, this the... maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they have the hey. theater is on all three levels, so there must be spaces where you can like. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, there's certainly yeah. with the service with the service um, t um, tubes for all of the employees and things. I was just confused about where the, that one particular thing was happening, given that it that I was imagining no. it mm. happening on a tube, like what Lisa's photo is yeah. showing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, I love this shit. I love talking about this. I know this is like we've just spent 15 minutes talking about the science and stuff, but it really helps me understand. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's why I love sci-fi. It's like when people spend the time. It's why I've listened to Project Hail Mary I don't know how many times because oh, it's so oh, fucking good and it's so, like, accurate and explains everything. It's so good. Anyway. Um, Thank I you. I understand more. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. It's not spoilery. This is a plot point that you've already been to, Lisa, where they discover like 
in the recycler, they're like, hey, there's like 70 extra kilos in the recycler. And I was like, gee, I wonder what could be about 70 kilos. Oh, and well I said to Matt, this was a plot point in something else. And I uh, could not figure out what it was. I'm like, it's either a book or a movie or something where they they figured out that there was a murder based on the fact that the, there was a space space thing and they had like yeah. recyclers. Yeah. And it was either that there was too much mass in the recycler or like the recycler wasn't working properly because the balance was off because people had put like, and there was a dead body in there basically. And I'm like, this has definitely been a plot point in something else. And I could not for the life of me figure out what it was. There's a Bones episode that that happens in and it has to do, it's not composter. It's a, um, it's, it's a chemical that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and, it, and it's not, the suction doesn't work pro- properly because the, there's, there's not enough, um, Ox, like air to to liquid for it to pull properly yeah because there was there was a body that had liquefied in the thing no, I I that, so it wasn't that. <laughs> yeah and it was definitely another space thing and i'm thinking it might have been a book like six saga book was it was it space or was it um one of the subsequent books to silo did that happen i'm just remembering because they compost people there yeah i don't remember that being a thing in that but no, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I could not. Okay. It was one of those things that, like, t- you know, like tickles the back of your brain where you're like, this has definitely been a thing in something else that I read. Like, uh, but a weight based thing, which I think is really cool. Like, it had nothing to do with what it was, but it was like a, it was a, a weight based. Yeah. God, these books. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, so, I can't I think. Know, so it's, I do. Whatever it was, it's not something you guys have either seen. Yeah. Or- I do. I do know that in her book, the second book in the Lady Astronaut series, she did have the condom mm. episode, yeah. which was putting stuff into the recycle. I do that remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. She, she's big on making sure that things do not get recycled. They're not supposed to be in there. you got to yeah. wash all your cans, get out, people. <laughs> <laughs> that might have been the book I was sick inside because I think I'm the only one who's read those, and I have a feeling that could have been that. And there's like 15 million books in that series, so yeah. it could have been. But maybe someone, maybe we might have an audience person watching that could leave it in the comments. There's someone watching and shouting at the screen. No, it's this show. It's this show. It could leave it in the comments. Or a book. I have no clue. But I've definitely, it's definitely been a plot point in something that I can't think of. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Thank you for the science. I feel better. Did everyone read the, or listen to, I guess? the extra non-story parts, the stuff about the science mm-hmm. and about the, yeah. So she mm-hmm. did actually have a, 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 a rocket scientist help her out with mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Yeah. She, she does totally have really good that. alpha readers that go through and check those things for her usually. So. Yeah. yeah. And I totally got like, I like, <clears throat> as you said, like this all made sense, but then it was like exactly what Bobby said was like going, where the hell were you standing on the ship full of pipes where everybody saw it? Like, it was a really good question. It's like, yeah. okay. <laughs> and it's really me just going, is it me? Or was that the point you chose to on purpose deviate from your science? And that's fine if that's what happened. I just need to know because I don't want to. <laughs> well, here's an something... interesting thing too, right? Sorry? Because I said, here's an interesting thing too. Yeah. Uh, is that those elevator and stair connecting parts between the rings. Yeah. They, if if they're big enough and they have room to contain more than just a set of stairs and you know an elevator tube, mm-hmm. if there was you know room in there, someone could fall from the top of that yeah. down to the bottom, and they'd you know make that's their true. way to the bottom, and they'd accelerate doing it too. Yeah, uh, that's true. So you could see them that way, assuming <laughs> that they're not like solid metal and you can't see inside them. But if you're at the top of one, yeah. top being relative here. Um, mm-hmm. You could you could watch them fall, mm-hmm. but true. I didn't think it was one of the things I kind of yeah. envisioned that it was the center tube. So yeah, it's a lot to talk about tubes. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh. So favorite characters? Should we go around and just check who? So I think some people have said already. Like some people said Gimlet. Some people said Fantine. Like. Favorite? How about each person's favorite character, least favorite character? Sarah, go. Me again. Gosh. Oh, I can uh, go. Uh, no, no, I can, I can, I can talk. Um, I really liked um Maria Piper, who I just keep thinking is just called Piper because Piper is also yeah. a first name. Mm-hmm. So every time they talk about Maria, I'm going, "Who's Maria? Oh yeah, that's 
Hyper. <laughs> two two first names is a name. Um, I yeah, I really liked her. She, I felt like that even in twenty three, whatever it was, there still seems to be sexism and uh, white old men who seem to know it all, and she has to put up with it. So yeah, yeah I um, I really liked her, and I I just thought she had a, an empathy um to things. Just really liked her. Um, and least favorite character. I mean, Wise is just fucking awful um yeah. <laughs> he's set up to be awful um yeah. uh yeah that would probably be be that but i also want to do a shout out of worst character to the um to the pool bartender like um that uh, kirsten mentioned who <laughs> shook a <laughs> martini oh my God. to ask <laughs> if she wanted vodka or gin and i'm I like know. <laughs> oh my god i was like if you don't know the like, answer to this, if, you shouldn't if be you making it. You are telling me that you're putting vodka, like there is no, no, no. If it's vodka, it's not actually martini. So <laughs> there was that. Martinis, and I have um, very strong opinions about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, um, so yeah, he was also on my hate list of people I'd never want to. Uh, <laughs> to oh, to, man. To I was thinking into. of you when I was reading that part because I was like having a meltdown and you, I was thinking, oh, Sarah's going to get this too. Like, well, I don't know cool. why she ordered a martini knowing what he did. I'm like, get a gin and tonic. I mean, seriously, he can't fuck that mm-hmm. up too much. You know? <laughs> like, yeah. Anyway, so that's me. Uh, Kirsten, throwing it your way. Yeah. Um, yeah, I really liked, is it Fontaine was the lawyer? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I really, really liked her. She gave me um, Avasarala vibes um, for those who've read these or seen the expanse, like just the whole, like, I'm not taking any bullshit kind of. Um, I loved that she's more like, colorful language. <laughs> um, yeah, I just liked her a lot. Um, yeah, agreed. I liked um Maria Piper as well. Um, she was really good. I don't know if I had a like apart from the the obvious villains. I don't think I had a a specific character that's my worst. I suppose apart from yeah. The ones that were supposed to be, I guess, you know. <laughs> you want to pick someone to go next? Um, Lisa. Um. Yeah. Uh. Well, I. I mean, I. Yeah, it's hard when I, you I, haven't finished. I, no, and <laughs> so for for favorite characters, um, I'm like I've already said I really loved Fontaine and Gimlet. I'm gonna I'm gonna and I actually really like Piper too, but I'm gonna shout out just how adorable Gimlet is in the way that. When dogs really know how to manipulate, <laughs> and I think I've commented earlier today to, to Bobby actually that there's a scene where Gimlet is trying to extort fries <laughs> of, of Piper. Mini spoiler, very, and I'm like, I would have caved. That that <laughs> dog would have got so many fries. The of fries me. are still not for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, in terms of least favorite character, they keep changing. Mm. so um yeah as the book progresses so i might have to get back to you on that one yeah i, I do agree wiser is obviously supposed to be extremely unlikable but yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh lisa pick somebody i think we're doing the whole you say and then you pick someone right oh, um uh has nay had a go mm. yeah okay nay. um so gimlet probably is my favorite but I really did enjoy all of the characters, like even the characters that you're supposed to hate, like Wiser and the other characters as we go along. Like they were good, hateful characters. Like you can't have a good book without having characters that you're going to hate. Like you mm-hmm. can't just have a book with characters that you all like, like that are all lovely. Like that doesn't make for good plot points. So I I can't think of anyone where I was like, Ugh, this this person is pointless in the book like I don't Mm. like this person being in the book and they're not giving me anything like even even just like the bartender in the arbor and their um uh I can't think of their name they're like the person that was on the lunar level with them with the on the sorry on the Terran level with them who was concierge concierge thank you I can they have a name as well. I don't remember what it was. Because that's I don't with his name. A, I think. Huh? But like, 
like all all bear or bien 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 Yeah. without changing the story completely like yeah. and none of them great like well i hated some of the characters i hated them in a way that i wanted them to be there because they were there to mm -hmm. be difficult yeah. um that um i mean yes fantine and gimlet were obviously very um very popular um gimlet i think featured a lot more in the story Fontaine sort of popped up and went away and popped up and went away. Um, so they were, they were obviously good. Um, I most hated, I don't, I don't know if hate's the right word. I, I think the most annoying character for me was Niall Silver. Um, Magician, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, and this is nothing against magicians. because I, I went through a phase of wanting to be a magician and try to learn magic and stuff like that. But it didn't pan out. And I feel like there is a personality type that lends itself to magic um, very well um, for oh reasons. You're not and um, we've had recently had an experience oh with God. a close up magician um, who reminded me a lot of yes. this guy. <laughs> so less, less hate and more just like, oh kind of a, a feel there but it, it hit it hit close to home i think because of more more recent events like to be fair this guy was 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 good like he was he was really good um but just you know his patter and stuff and just like oh i can't i can't deal like i like i like your sleight of hand it's real good but just close your mouth just do a trick. <laughs> um That was so true. Okay, so you, you're the pen and teller kind of like. Yes, <laughs> like, pen teller great. There we go, yeah. Yeah. Um, so he was like probably most annoying. Um, I, this seems to be a, a bit of a pattern for uh, Mary, but I, it, it, this is like in the Lady Astronaut series as well, but I really like her spousal relationships. Yeah. And the main characters were so nice together. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. And like Shell's doing his like, I want to jump in and help, but like I know that's going to piss you off, or I know this is something you need to sort out yourself. And but then also there were times where he knew he had to jump in and help, and mm -hmm. you know that that was something that was beyond what she was able to handle at the time, and you know just those kind of things. And their little you know um, their little in jokes with each other, and the nice little. Like they were like little physical intimate moments with each other here and there. Just, you know, it was like a nice, I really liked their relationship. Yeah. I had a, I enjoyed that. Um, who hasn't gone? I guess Shig and I. Shig? Yeah, that's two. Yeah. Okay. I'll pick David. Um, okay. So I like the writing of Tesla. Like I thought the character was really detailed. Um, you know, I can't say that I didn't really just like lose it laughing when it's like, yeah, I'm just calculating the um, dipshit's net worth, worth to see how long, <laughs> we can, how much we can sue him for because that's how much he's going to earn for the rest of his life when we sell him to servitude or whatever. <laughs> um, and just little things like that, like stuff that realistically lawyers aren't allowed to say out loud, but are thinking very, very loudly. Um, <laughs> you know, um, I that character was hilarious just because they're sitting there crocheting and just ripping people to pieces. Yeah, I um, loved it. Like, just as a side character. Um, but as for my least favourite character, apart from the storybook villains, um, Shao was. Um, I found him really condescending. Okay. Um, I found it... I was trying to figure out what bugged me about him and it was like reading a Heinlein book when I was a teenager. We're even on like a torch ship sort of thing cruising through. He's yeah, he can be really supportive and stuff. Um, and I'm not saying that he's a bad person, but he came across as so condescending in so many ways um, that it just started driving me up the wall. It was like nails on a chalkboard. Um, so yeah, maybe it's just the way I read it. Maybe it's um, the way the character resonated with me. Um, 
but there was many things where it didn't seem on um, like I'm just trying to um you know I'm just trying to calm you down it's seems to be there there like you know it's okay I've got this and let's not talk about this because this is my deal now and you can just go over there and do your wifey things so I read it a bit differently um it doesn't mean there's a that I'm necessarily right but the character probably grated with me more than anything else yeah. Bobby. Uh, okay, so my my favorite character was Fontaine. I mean, I loved Gimlet. Gimlet was awesome. But the thing that I loved the most about Fontaine was the the way that she was written um, was this really fun plot device where you like where because there's this delay in communication, you're mm-hmm. you're having multiple things happening at once. It's like having a chat with someone on the freaking internet anyway, where you're talking about two or three different things and you're constantly backing up. And if, if people most of us here are old enough to remember before you could reply back to a specific message to, to connect what your response was. Remember when we would like we were using AOL chats and all of that, and you couldn't tag in you know, or link into a previous. So people had to go. It was, it was this constant what crap? I've lost the thread of the conversation. Yeah, that's what it kind of reminded me of. But it was well, it was done well enough that you could keep up with what different things were being responded to, which I really liked. And it comes in in a really creative way later on that I will not speak about in detail till Lisa leaves. Because I really <laughs> it, but, but I don't want to spoil or anything. But I really liked how it was used throughout the whole book with the way those delays worked. Um, on top of that, she just had some really fun lines and things. So I thought um, she reminded me of some lawyers that I've known, like when they're in there, like, are you kidding me? You know, we should we should have your license removed. You know, you shouldn't be allowed to lawyer yourself kind of thing because they, they, they're so pissed, which I quite liked because I thought that, that was pretty true to form from my experience. Um, and can, and, I, can I just point out that she got, yeah. spoiler, got irate because she had been kept waiting till her yarn was about to run out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, and also because she's like, I didn't bring enough for this. I didn't have enough yarn for this shit today. Kind of, <laughs> I, I've been there. Um, so yeah, I like that. And I think the the character that I found the most annoying, not not the one that I hated, because I, I agree with Nay. Like, basically, all the characters they were written to their purpose in a really really good way. Like, so, but the one that I think I would like if if I had been in that story world myself and dealing with them i would have been so angry i might have murdered them myself and that was the doctor <laughs> who refused to step down when her patient said back off i want a different doctor i have no time for doctors who will not listen to you whenever you set up a boundary like that so i i understood why it was there that's fine but i, I it actually got a bit frustrating and upsetting for me the more back and forth with that well no you have to justify why i'm not allowed to treat this patient sort of thing like why you want your own personal physician um like yeah that that part I was not cool with so I think that was the one that I would have been like you know we probably I see why it's there we could have also probably not had that and had something else and we could have made the story go along but it's fine that's what she chose so yeah um what else do we want to talk about before we get into too much more spoilery or if it thinks oh the the use of uh gender neutral stuff how do people feel about that because i noticed in my second listen that um there because the first time i listened to it i thought oh yeah this is actually really great like there's there's far less sexism happening there's basically no sexism happening and for the most part and then my second listen i actually picked up she's got specific characters who completely ignore this new convention of using gender neutral honorifics and all of this and it's on purpose because they're they tend to be the villains so the people that are supposed to be clueless and totally stuck in their ways and not listening to the world around them but so I thought that was interesting what what were other people's thoughts on that yeah I thought that was realistic because I thought you know it's some there's always going to be the old person that's like Mm -hmm. you know screw this I'm not doing this and there's always going to be that culture that's brought like the people that are their parents were like that so their their you know and their parents were like that and that's what they've kind of brought with them from you know what I mean like I'd like Mm -hmm. to I'd like to optimistically hope that they're going to be the minority of people but I think I'm not idealistic enough to think that that those people will not exist at all in the future unfortunately well this was like set in 2075 so that's 
Not too far. Like a couple of generations away mm-hmm. yeah. from where we are now. So, and I feel like the the whole, just like the way that everyone introduces themselves with their pronouns as just part of their introduction as, as mm-hmm. a matter of course, is still probably a little ways away from where we are now. I don't think we're like immediately before that kind of convention becoming like basically just the way it happens. Yeah. Um, so I think there's probably like at least one more generation of people between now and when this is set that are kind of where the, that, that is not the done thing kind of thing. So we might, I feel like we might be looking at a mix of like people for whom this is, they've been brought up with it and it's like yeah. it's and it's just natural. how it is, just the way things are. And some people who are still, you know, yeah. in that intermediate phase, and then other people who just flat ignore it because they're assholes. So. Yeah, yeah, it did sort of come across to me that the people, who generally the ones who weren't who weren't following that that convention, they were being they were also quite just being disrespectful in general to everyone. Like like they were using the term wife. Like you'd hear everyone else yeah. would refer to each other's spouses as spouse, never wife, never husband. Um, um, maybe if they if it was a one on one conversation with the with their spouse, they might refer to each other by one of one of those names. But otherwise, everyone else said spouse until you got to like uh, Wiser, who would call her wife, and he yeah. would he'd be like, "You need to get your wife in line and stuff." And yeah. it was always in a very derogatory way. It was clearly a your you know you yeah. should, she does she doesn't need to be listened to because she's a woman, and yeah. that was why he was pointing out the word wife instead of using yeah. the word spouse. And yeah. 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 But um I kind of liked it. Like I mean Mary Robinette she like she 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 has these things that kind of get stuck in her crawl that she that she writes about and that's like a theme in one in her book. Um like you know the relentless moon was like eating disorders and talking about eating disorders with people and why they why they occur and then they've got this here which is she had, she had said in an interview that she was like I'm really sick and tired of going to conventions and people not just being willing to you know just encourage people to introduce with your pronouns and just not use an, a specific pronoun gender pronoun until you know just assume neutral until you know so she's like I'm gonna write it in my book this is what's gonna be here. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. to show people how easy it is so um, yeah yeah well I'm kind of like I know um, all of our email signatures at work now you know, the the recommendation is to include your pronouns. And I, I see that most people do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like, yeah, it's just taking that kind of thing just an extra step into like, yeah, I'm, mm-hmm. it's a, just an in-person thing now as well as. Yeah. yeah. I, liked, I liked the use of mix instead yeah. of miss or mister. I was yeah. like, oh, I would have that today if we could. I love that. Uh, yeah. it yeah, you can I do made that. that comment today. Yeah. My mum got this letter. Yeah. She had to go to the hospital today about a procedure she's having in the new year. And then part of the, the package of stuff they gave her of information was like this letter. And it was like, dear Mr. Mrs. Ms. And I out loud said, why don't they put mix on yeah. this? <laughs> they they mean. Like, why would they do that? And I'm like, well, they don't know. You might not be a Mr. or a Mrs. or a Ms. Yeah. So why couldn't they do that? And Matt's like, yeah, but it's like a Queensland hospital. <laughs> and I'm like, that's yeah, that's That's millions of dollars of redoing a form. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's to not be that fair, hard. do you know how many copies of that form that would be just in the hospital that they would, if yeah. a new change form it on the out, form. they will need to throw all of them. Yeah. yeah, but you wouldn't though. You could just no, you change wouldn't. the new ones, right? Like, no, you but you just need use to have the ones that you have all the same. Yeah. Because their protocol is that every form needs to be the same. Yeah. So if they bring out a new form, all of the old forms need to be disregarded. And yeah. basically yeah. They re- yeah. Re- yeah. I think I I like the whole mixed thing. I think what's interesting is I think that the 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 whole Mr. Miss, Mrs. Ms. Master. I mean, that came from a time of trying to honestly, it's come from a point of time of identifying stage. And pronoun. That is what it, that's mm-hmm. what that was. And it's actually interesting that she still has that kind of honorific of mix, whereas actually you could probably just do away with it altogether, um, you know, and just call people by their first and last names. Like it was off in the concierge, oh, mix the row, you know, as opposed to, you know, a teacher, you know, like that type of thing. 
because that's that is like that's what that kind of the idea was behind those things so I thought that was really interesting and I liked that whole like if you still want to have kind of that how do I describe it um that it's honorific. like a level of formality yeah to I mean, sort it's of like either it's having that mix it's along with the gender and the stage yeah basically. because so, that's what it's doing is it's going okay it's formality but it's not telling you the yeah. stage or their pronoun that comes you know the stage you're just going to have to figure like the stage of they are yeah. in their life you're just the thing if they knew out. that they yeah. were a doctor they would say doctor whatever yeah you know yeah, because professor. that yeah. they've earned yeah. that well, honorific I mean, that, through yeah them. you still you still find that you they still use it for stage though because children like the teenager that yeah. teenager is referred to by their first name not by mix and mm-hmm. their last name um all of the adults so everyone who's considered an adult is referred to by mix and their last name, unless being granted permission to use a familiar form. And when they go through um, their introductions, they usually include pronouns. But the point, the point she was going for with mix was just to say that you shouldn't, it shouldn't matter what people's pronouns are. You can still be polite. You can still speak yeah. to them and you can use a gender neutral form. She chose they in this case, she a mix and they, them. As well, it was, a work, it was like your working was- vehicular form. Yeah. There was Someone one was character a who was Caesar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Which, that's whenever yeah. they, they were after. I love, but I Stone still Grove. get very confused when I listen to it. Like, I still yeah. went. I, I don't know which bit's which. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's, very, it's not common. It's not usual. I couldn't. I couldn't use. I love it, and I actually would love to use it more often because I yeah. think it's less confusing than using they them because that can give like the plural. Mm-hmm. You know, um, gets confusing when you're like, is it they as in the person or they as in like your whole family's coming? Because I don't know right now, right? Whereas I would yeah. love to use Zazu, but. I don't know how to use it right. I need to be taught how to use it. So yeah, well, that's because when I heard yeah, her describing that sentence, I was so lost. I was like going, I don't know. I just have to let this wash over me right now because yeah. I don't know which bit's referring to the, you know, this bit. Yeah, yeah anyway, yeah. so. Um, um, but yeah, so I wanted to with, ask. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so is mix actually a thing already? Because that, yes. I believe, is the first time I've oh, ever cool. heard it. So, so in the ACT, yeah, no. you can I've heard it. I love register it. yourself as non-binary or, uh, and you can request that honorific or you can just request that honorific. That's With your great. official forms, yeah. That's I love cool. it. Because yeah, cool. I don't have an exposure yeah. to that because um, I'm not aware of any, uh, like, adult staff at the, at the college I work at who mm-hmm. use that honorific. And, of course, we don't use honorifics with our students because they're, Yep. students but we yep. do use uh we use non-gendered pronoun i'm actually really enjoying being in a school where the culture is you don't assume the pronoun unless you're really clear yeah like what, how that person how that student is identifying and it's mm. like it's really been good for me to help me work through adopting the the the, the behaviors like, mm-hmm. like i already had the mindset but it's like just practicing it is really good yeah yeah um one more thing we could talk about before we get into the rest of it and Lisa will have to say bye-bye is the idea of the lunar french and the te- uh, japanese terran yeah another one i like i thought that was i was like oh i was getting real shades of the bobs um from that like of like how the different areas took over you know of the like i was like oh so the japanese See, took over. Love it. i was I love getting it. i was getting expanse i go this is mm. not oh mm-hmm. nice but like you know how in the, the expanse they're like oh like they had the martian twang and they've got like this um yes like yes. um texan kind of texanish kind of yeah yeah Except for Bobby, who's a Kiwi, apparently. Mariner Valley, Mariner Valley twang, which is like all the Texans settled in Mariner Valley and on Mars, and right. so they have that. Yeah. Um, yeah, Bobby's from a different part. Other Bobby. Oh, is that what she's part of Mars? <laughs> all right, right. It took right. me a second, and then I was like, "Oh, we're still talking about the expense. Got it. <laughs> sorry, not you. The expense. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. No, yeah oh, cool. Yeah, no, cool. I love, I love that. And um, what was her name? Annie's Annie's spouse. Um, oh, Jalna. 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 Like yeah, yeah. yeah. She, she was. Yeah, she was so like um so polite and graceful, like Luna graceful, and like I was like, oh, I can just see her. You know, yeah. very cool. Oh, yeah. that makes me think of a unresolved plot point that I want to talk. about. Yeah, let's talk about. We need to get into some of the stuff. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm, thank you so much for accommodating my not finishing, and I'm looking forward to finishing it. And. Yeah, thanks for coming anyway. We got to talk to you anyhow.
I'm also going to head off as well. I'm rapidly running out of energy, so. Cool. Fair enough. Okay. Oh, Lisa's gone. Okay. Bye, Lisa. Okay. <laughs> um, Bye, David. I did very briefly want to say that I really appreciate, and it was only exposed at near the end in any detail. I really appreciated the way Mary Robinette Co. All wrote the character's PTSD. Yeah. Um, mm. It yes. was incredibly well done. Um, it was unsubtle in ways that most people will pick up, but some of the subtleties that she introduced were really well written. Mm -hmm. um, and I just really appreciated that. Yeah. Mm. Me help. Good night. Bye. 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 Yeah, that was something I meant to bring up before was the um the 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 way disability in general was handled. Yeah. Like the PTSD, yeah. also the disability stuff. Yeah. The chronic pain stuff, mm -hmm. which I thought was very well done. Why is the accessible cubicle always the one furthest away from the door? That's yeah, true. right? Like <laughs> Make the walk My, shorter, please. Yeah. True, but I also thought it give, maybe it gives people a bit more time to and not to have everybody walking past because as someone who uses it with their daughter, it's nice not to have this reminder as everyone go, kind of goes, oh, it's like, and have everyone rattling on the door or, you know, trying to get in. So I thought it gives people that time and privacy to mm. you know, use the feel like they're in a space and they're also, you know, you're in the corner of it so you're not, like next to lots of stalls mm. so Sorry. from a yeah so that that like I totally understood like why is it the furthest from the door I was like yep yeah but I was also, like, there is another side to it which is if you are in a wheelchair or you have like a lot of things the costume bags or whatever you do want a bit more privacy you do want to not feel like everybody's walking past your stall while you're sorting shit out literally yeah. so I kind of was like there are other like you know other good reasons that are, are good about that so um, Sounds like know, the like, best thing. Uh, have a separate room in general yes. that's not inside yes. either one of those hallways. Yeah. <laughs> or or have both because yes. I really appreciate when there's accessible toilets outside, but also I really appreciate the um the accessible toilet inside, you know, which opens outwards, which is great for Luna and I. So yes. I really appreciate that. Because yes. I don't want to use that one if there's a, like a person in a wheelchair, I'm taking up their very accessible place. We can go use a stall, but there's two of us and it gets awkward. Anyway, yeah. rant over. There's one at our <laughs> local shops. I don't know if you've got them near you, Sarah, but there's one at our local shops where it's a big cubicle mm -hmm. and there's an adult-sized toilet and a child-sized toilet in the same cubicle. Oh, we use a lot so of those. Good. I used yeah, to we, all the time when the kids were little. Claire time. now is too yeah. grown for that. She goes into her own. I kids. bitched at Marrickville oh. Library about their toilet system because I said, you haven't bothered to put in a small toilet. Yeah. yeah I was like, you have a good. fucking... You were next to the children's department and you haven't bothered to put in a small children's toilet. And that was completely redone too. Why didn't they? Exactly. Did, so I just went and said, this is not actually as family friendly as you think it is. Mm -hmm. You only had to look at the fucking mall down the road to mm -hmm. know how to do it. And they've done a great, you know, done a good job because they have like a really good setup there with like privacy rooms for breastfeeding and, and pumping. They have a little play area. They had the double toilet thing. And I'm just like, Anyway, sorry. Rant over. I mean, this is the real I mean, reason Sarah say, wanted to get out of Marrickville. <laughs> this goddamn it, toilet. It's not often you had to tell a library to take notes out of a you know capitalistic wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, let's get into it, guys. Oh, I'm so excited. So, yeah. um, yeah. the who done it? Ah, oh, okay. So now Lisa's not here. Can we talk about who had a heartbeat moment in the bathroom? I nearly threw the, like I was listening to an audio book, so I nearly metaphorically threw the book because if that had oh, actually been the I was like, in it, no. I was going to lose my shit. I was, I was so no. mad that it, it wasn't is not possible. Good. Like we, I was like, no, we, there's been too many. Like it's been it no because I would have picked up on something if it was going to be. <laughs> I was like, no, surely I'm not that oblivious that like I've read this whole entire book. I kind of have an idea of who it is. And now you're trying to tell me that this person, no, no, oh. no okay, no. I, I had two moments. I was expecting the, the face mask reveal. I was totally expecting it to be not the person, like, it was expecting it to not be Shell, but someone pretending to be Shell, because I assumed oh, that nice. I, from the very beginning, I'm like, someone's dressed up as Shell and they've gone in, they've killed this person and that's why everyone... Oh, did it. nice. So, because there was, there was too much discussion about how they were walking around with different faces on. So... 
Um, I didn't see that coming. Uh, and when that came up, I was like, you better be fucking joking. <laughs> I was like, what well, I kept thinking I was, I was like, oh my God. I was like, that's a great twist. But what has he got to gain from all this shit? Like, seriously, mm. he's been in just say married to her and then divorce her in two years. Like, that was the bit I kept thinking. It's like, well, there what was is a bit he early gaining on from these well. murders? Nothing like makes it, it so- towards the the first like I don't know first little bit after the the first murder where there was kind of like an initial implication of a lot of people mm-hmm. and he was yeah. kind of like suggested early on mm-hmm. um, yeah. as like after it's after you know that like well you don't know at the time but yeah. you know there was some I can't remember the, which point it was exactly but something came up and it was like oh. Your you could be very easily implied to be the murderer, actually, and not just what the security people are saying. But I'm like, no, it can't, can't be. Yeah, can't, no, it was a real no, happy moment. I was like, it's such a twist. And listening to the audio book, that was the yeah. big. I don't yeah. know what it was like for Matt for you because you were reading it. Because for us, the moment, yeah, because it's the voice. Mary Robinette Cow opened her mouth. She was, it was like, well, <gasps> oh my god! I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, because when he says Tesla baby, I didn't yeah. because I've not heard the voice. I read that. I'm like, he's never said baby before. That's the thing is he hadn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that yeah, that was baby. what felt felt weird to me but I I didn't tweak straight away but I'm like that's unusual and I yeah. thought I thought for a second like oh well maybe this is like his real personality coming out that's what I thought I thought that was just his mask coming off mm. and that's mm. why it was so different like, oh, I was no, like oh no that's not don't, his don't that's do not it his tone. <laughs> that's not how he talks to her I was like surely yeah. like maybe it's just his mask coming off. I'm like, surely I haven't missed that much in the book that I've like been completely oblivious to the fact that he is the murderer. <laughs> I loved the bit at the end where he's like, he didn't really do that to me. He's just like, no, Speaking, no, speaking like, to the not. audience here, the writer's I know. speaking to the it reader. Was like, it was like he was talking to us like, and I was like, no, of course we didn't believe it was you. No, no. <laughs> not uh, even for a second. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. So speaking of going back to what we were talking about with um, non-binary mm. uh, type stuff, with uh, was it Ewan? Mm-hmm. Ewan's the child, yeah. the teenager. Yeah. Ewan the sloop, sloop makers. Yeah. 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 Now I was slightly confused about this. Mm. About did you pick were... up the plot point on this? The plot hole, possible plot hole on this? Because I did. That I is mm. it two kids? No, no, one. It's kid. one kid, and I wasn't no. sure if because they were talking that about Eve. A few years ago, they were presenting. That's as that's a what girl. I was trying to work out whether yeah. there yeah. was actually two yeah. kids yeah. or they went, had changed yeah. they how went they were presenting. Yes. The show, like the robotics show, as Eve, as yeah. actually her, and then yeah. obviously either that was a facade, and that's how they were trying to hide themselves, or. Mm. They, they just got like older and discovered them. Her. I they, think as a teenager, yeah. like it's pretty plausible that it will take them a while to figure that stuff out. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. That's also, what I think. Teenager, with all those hormones going on, being gen- like being neutral is probably a bit more comfortable because you you like you're like I don't know now because yeah. I thought it was this and now there's all this weird things happening that I don't understand. Yeah. I was yeah. just confused because I thought for a second yeah. that there were two kids at play. And that was somehow complicating mm, yeah. what was okay. going well, the on. Bit, oh the that bit that she never says, and this is the thing that I'm like, is this a plot hole or you've suggested it, but you never actually confirmed it, is I'm like going, so you and had a spoofer at the competition, which meant that everything got fucked up, like the navigation, mm-hmm. remember? Mm-hmm. But remember also that Ewan has a spoofer so they could never get a clear photograph of them. But how did they identify Ewan slash Eve from the photograph? They did say no. that a film photo would, would work, but they never confirmed that's what she dredged up. Because I listened to it the second time, I'm going, you never confirmed it was a film photograph. I assume that it was a film photograph because it would have been in like a news, it, like it was, she said it was from a newsletter. Mm. And if it was going out yeah. to schools and stuff, and that's her thing, it may have been physical paper. Yeah, I, I, I figured, I figured that it was a film photo, but I just thought that should have been 
driven home like that 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 was a bit like as far as and look in fairness it was a fucking pandemic she did brilliantly right okay yeah. you know you can only do what you can do when you like don't want to write a book mm. but I did remember going I'm guessing because you mentioned that like three chapters ago that film people were using film photos on celebrities mm. that you must have used it at the competition but it was also that case of well why would you use the at a competition and then that's the seed that I think should have been sown so mm -hmm. that was just that's just a little bit nitpicking because I was kind of like going you know I'm guessing it was a film but you didn't kind of you had these two bits but you didn't quite connect them so yeah that's what I guessed um did fish kill George I thought it was meta I, I I thought it wasn't on purpose. I thought I always assumed that she um she did, but it was through um what's the word? Negligence and drunkenness. Yeah, think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, negligence. I yeah, because I, I couldn't work it out because they said that, that the wound shouldn't have killed George and then George was dead. Yeah. And then she was upset. And I just thought that she was like upset because someone has assumed like because she'd heard Shell and Tesla being like well you must have killed her and her being like people think I've killed her like what but you know yeah. but there was no confirmation that's what the fuck happened to poor George you know mm. like yeah so you know um I yeah, was just I, curious to know what if what other people picked up there because I was like going did she kill them like I don't know <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I just assumed that. I, to be fair, I can't remember it, it ever explicitly being wrapped up there, but I think that's because that's another one of those she hadn't picked out yet who the actual killer was. It like, the actual like mastermind was. Just and so, yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Ning. What? I was just going to say that with George's murder, I don't feel like it was so much of a murder. It was that she was injured and then it was she died accidentally mm -hmm. from care not being as good yeah. as it should not yeah because okay. she was yeah, yeah. Not someone else the for them. sure yeah someone else did the stabbing yeah. someone who either was like with like jalna or the, whoever the other person was they looked very similar from the back um yeah i can't remember yeah. that was yeah and then but yeah it's because the the ship had the ship should have had the capabilities to heal her because she was not dead on site um, yeah yeah um, like she had a um, knife where she had a knife sticking out of her and they're like well that shouldn't have yeah. killed her unless she could like and if she did die it would have been an affection that would have gone on do you know what I mean like yeah, yeah. But she was pretty much she was dead two hours later so that was the bit that I kind of again didn't get wrapped up as like well what happened like obviously the person who who murdered attempted murder on her was um Holden or the yeah. Holden masquerade yeah. but what happened once Candy and Fish took her away? Like that's the bit we never found out about. And I was really curious because I know that Fish was like crying, but I yeah, I understood. Yeah, like you said, like she didn't really kill her. Like she didn't it was murder an, it her. Was an active mur mur yeah, murder. but what <laughs> actually went down in that medical suite? Like what happened? I, was she so drunk she pulled out the knife? And then there was like I I was really just curious to know what the fuck happened. Yeah. Well, I wonder if it was that. Um, if fake Holden, I can't think of what the person's name is. Let's just call him Holden. Yeah, fake Holden. It's good. If yeah, he had done something to a drink of roots, oh. like he, you know how he drugs. Um, yes, because it was a smell of bourbon thing that kind yeah. of wafted through the novel. The thing, wasn't like, there? Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I wonder yeah. if Ruth was drugged or you know there was alcohol put yeah. in something that she was drinking so that she wasn't quite competent yeah. yeah and that's why she was on it and that's why she would have been so and she well. went I did it yeah okay that makes a lot of sense that makes a lot of sense that they push she put like a barbiturate into the bourbon yeah no that makes yeah. a lot of sense okay that was cool. my sort of thought mm. but again nothing gets confirmed so it's no really but that that's a good one because that's the bit yeah cool that makes sense I only sort of thought about when we got confesses yeah once we sort of found out that Xiao had also been drugged yeah and that it was yeah yeah like finding that out sort of made me think um maybe that's what happened with Ruth once we sort of yeah. worked out that Ruth wasn't murderer yeah did anybody else oh sorry go, go into that bit when she was talking to him on the phone when he was drugged and it was like hang on like no, I just thought he was really tired and he he just woken up. 
I no, honestly see, I was him. like, something's wrong. It's not really him. That she's yeah. I assumed right. that the he first had thing been... I thought there was someone in the room with him and he was doing that thing of like, yes, I am fine and I'm Yeah, I did think he possibly yeah. had been drugged, but I didn't yeah. guess that it was, was like, someone masquerading. As... Right. Is he drugged yeah. or drunk or so, like he doesn't sound yeah. like, he, he, like it didn't just sound tired. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was really well written though, because she she describes it at, like from Tesla's point of view as the room, this, the the timbre of the room changes or the acoustic of the room changes, which is exactly what happens if someone puts you on speakerphone. Mm-hmm. But it's also what can happen if someone switches the line to somewhere else in a different room. Yeah. Um, so and that's, we were kind of we were all trying I... to assume it was yeah. the cell and that it was being put on speakerphone. So that was my question: Was Fake Holden in the room, or was Fake Holden? getting it from Bob, because I still don't quite know when the Bob fake Holden thing happened. Well, from the very um, beginning, because Bob was, uh, had to work with fake Holden to um, help him, help fake Holden um, gauge where all of the line of sights were with the cameras, because this person never gets caught on camera. And there's there's this, there's this a point towards the end of the book where Tesla is thinking this through and she realizes, oh, someone in security had to be helping. Yeah. The, the, it was two people. Yeah. And Bob yeah. was the only one that bit. Yeah, so Bob was in it from the beginning. Mm-hmm. I thought maybe Bob got, like, when Holt, fake Holden was in the bed, that, that you know, and he was guarding him. I thought maybe that's when it all went down. So mm-hmm. I couldn't quite work out that. Thank you. So that solves that bit. Yeah. And then what was the bit we were talking about before? Oh, yeah, so do you think it was, yeah, so it was, he wasn't, because I thought maybe he was in the room, but he wasn't. He just... Maybe, was, on, maybe he was outside the room because Bob wasn't always in the room with Shell. Uh, so I, was, I, was, I, I was thinking it's he had stepped outside, closed the door because maybe he was already having a tete-a-tete with fake Holden. This is this that's complete conjecture. It was just me trying to figure out if that's how maybe it would have worked because I couldn't. Yeah, yeah but unless Shell was drugged to the point somehow so quickly that he because he only remembers half that conversation. So. Yeah. Um, so the yeah so was that when he was being guarded by was that when he was in the hotel suite or was that when yeah because Gimlet was in the room with him right so he was in the new he was in the Martian hotel suite Bob was guarding him is that when that all went down I can't Bob guards him in several places including the medic bay I think or the cell yeah so I don't remember (laughs) okay yesterday I don't remember No, no, it's all good. Um, thank you. I, um, and then I had, I'm still confused. Was George the secretary or the ex-spouse? I can't work it out because they were all at university together. Oh, so, so um, George and was Charles partners investigate with someone. Holden, like real Holden. Yeah. And then I don't know if they, like, I don't know what the actual story is about them breaking up but like the story we get is that they broke up and he wants to move to Mars Mars, and she's like well I will come with you as your assistant because you can't live without me yeah but there was the shell had, invest- that- had investigated for a different how- how- for a different how- said he knew who George was because he had some long lens photos of her Mm. and he said oh he uh, he decided to cheat on his spouse with the secretary and I was going and secretary not being as in a derogatory term I, I realized it was like now knowing what George is is more like the secretary of the company you know yeah. the company secretary mm-hmm. and I was like and then when we found out later I was like is this like the long lost mm-hmm. they have they've never confirmed their love for one another even though they went to university I, I, and I, I, pretty sure I was George so confused the secretary that became the partner and is now the secretary again. Yeah, because right. there, yeah, because there was that the fake Holden is the is the first spouse, the first ex spouse that they thought died or something. It's what's his face. I don't remember his name, but that there's at some point because that's the person Shell had been employed by to to spy and investigate hold real. So who had employed? Yeah, so who had employed Shell? The Holden's first, first husband. It was a man. It's referred to yes. as his husband spouse. Right. And Who? and Shell says, "Are you sure he's dead?" Oh. They thought he died. 
And and he was at university yeah. with George yeah, Crowley. Yeah, they were university together, and that's how he understood, main, no, uh, don't forget the main, whatever Can it was. Can I just say, I just want, I don't know if she'll ever watch this, but can you give us the university, like, this threesome mm. business happening with George and there's fish and everything that's going on because that is a twist of web that I need to know more about, right? Yeah. Like she's like, there's three people at university together, two of them get married, then no. two of them have an affair. It's just like this. No, 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 no. There's four. There's four. There's fish, yeah, but Ho- there's George, fish as well. Holden, and then this 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 boyfriend husband person. The boyfriend who becomes names. a spouse. Yeah. yeah. But then he it sounds like then George and 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 Holden have an affair that he then leaves his spouse for. Mm-hmm. But it's it was funny because it was it was so interesting. Now I think about it because Shal like says, "Oh, it's you know the typical middle aged you know rich middle aged and had an affair." But it's like he didn't go and have an affair with a twenty year old. He had an affair with his like one of oh, his yeah. oldest friends, and yeah. I was like. This is that's an awesome story. I want to know more about that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's awesome. It is what I thought it was, and yeah. I'm like, that's fascinating. I just, I, yeah. Anyway, there's something there. Just say, Mary. There's something there in that story. We could, we could get, we could find out what happened. Remember the main. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, Pooh, look at the kitty. Hi. Oh, I don't really get to see you. Hello. Is and then true? I. Can someone please help me the, right at the beginning? And I've listened. I still don't know what the hell was going on. Uh-huh. So you know the argument right at the beginning of the R bar on karaoke night. Uh-huh. Niles is there with sleep makers, Ori. And I know why they're arguing. But George is there too and George says things. So why is George involved in this? Because that's the bit I don't understand is why it's like I understand why sleep makers and Niles are having arguments. But mm-hmm. what is George's involvement in this argument? I don't know that we ever find out. Do we? Uh, I don't know if we do. I don't remember. Yeah, because it makes sense to me why Niles, like, because Sleep Maker says to Niles, that's not part, like, I get it completely. It all makes sense. But I'm like, well, what's the whole deal with, like, why was George there? Because George just, like, says something. And then what's, Emmanuel shows up and drops a tray to get a spoofer into somebody's pocket, right? Into George's mm. pocket? Yeah. So George. that Holden yeah. can go and kill George, and that yeah, I know that was my last question. Emmanuel, so, that's who that's who did it. Yeah, yeah, Not yeah. Is, it, is Holden and George sharing a suite on this cruise, or are they in separate rooms? I don't remember. It doesn't yeah, thought... would necessarily matter because if they're having, if they're if they're are they they're still having affairs and kind of slipping up, you know, or if they're discussing plans, obviously they would be back and forth into his sweet because I don't imagine him going to someone else's space um and her coming in to discuss plans and details if they're moving yeah and so, that's what I'm wondering when did George did George figure out that Holden was because George would have known Holden her entire life like since she was in university had an affair with him so with Holden George had yeah. an affair with Holden yeah so um like I remember Tesla saying something around that. Anyway, so that was what I was trying to work out because I was like, I understand why Nas and Ori are having an argument. I understand what Emmanuel did, like dropping the tray to create a distraction to put the spoofer into. But why was George even like, what is going on? Like, I just didn't even know. So I just, I, yeah, just was curious if anyone knew why George was there, what George had to say about it. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. Um, my, oh, the, the, the towels. I just wanted to say, I thought it was actually a really cute little clue that Hot Fake Holden appreciated the artistry because loved all the towel animals, like appreciates <laughs> creativity and artistry in its different forms because as an actor, like mm. they're so, you know, so I thought that was a nice little, like, well, that was cute. <laughs> yeah. The towel animal thing was the, so, such a cruise cruise ship kind of thing i know i know it's so cute though it's so cute um Um, you were gonna say something yeah just the only the only one thing that i was like uh and this was this was very close to the end it was just just before uh tesla got up to go out and to the bathroom and confront um was when they were sitting in the theater and um, oh, or was it after after they'd been brought back into the theater? I can't remember exactly. 
But either way, she was sitting next to Jalna and yeah. Jalna said, oh, I'm glad you're here because there's something I've been wanting to talk to you about. And she's like, I wonder if it's the same thing I've been wanting to talk to you about. And she's like, oh, it might be. And then something happens. And then they never talk again. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck did you want to talk about? Robots. I assumed it was robots, but but I thought there was like some so, sort of like maybe some other level of like intrigue still going on at this point. And yeah. Like, I mean, could be, could be. I think the first time I listened, I went through the book, I think I just assumed it was robot stuff because Tesla did not realize who she was, who Jana was in the beginning because she knew Jana as Jem mm-hmm. in the industry. So, and when, and when you and pointed out like, kind of outed who Jalna was. Maybe she wanted to talk to her about Ewan, about Maybe. getting Ewan sort like that, because like Jalna had definitely taken a like to Ewan and mm-hmm. Tesla did as well. And everything that went down with, you know, sloop makers, which is, oh, just, it's really heartbreaking, that kind of shit. It really, really hard. Like I really felt for Ewan in that situation. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe it was to do with that. Um, actually, and that leads me to the question is, well, where was Annie? Because that's who she goes off, you know, where's Annie? And, and Jolna says, mm. oh, oh, my God, yeah, where is Annie? She goes off the toilet thinking the killer's Annie mm. and runs into fake Holden. Yeah. And Whatever then they all come back and Annie's back again. I'm like, well, where did Annie go? <laughs> I thought Annie was back behind stage to be brought out as a, as a guest, as an extra. Or is no, that a, this, a different this point? This was after Niles was dead. This was after Niles got killed. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So anyway, that was the bit that I was sort of sitting there. And then I thought it was a nice and get a nice twist when Annie's like been so, oh, and the accent she did for um, Annie was so great. I just I had the, French. <laughs> the secretary from um, uh, from First Bueller's Day Off. Does anybody else know that movie as well as I do? <laughs> Not as well as you do. Oh, you sound okay. like Dirty Harry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I just had her in my head. Um, and um, and she lashes out and says to, you know, says how she's been so sweet to Tesla. And then she just, I'm guessing, she, she just does this turn and says, you know, Tesla Crane, you know, after she killed all those people. Do you guys remember that bit in the book? What, where she turns around and she's and she's talking about how like no one would have uh, trusted Tesla or whatever because of the accent that she calls and how horrible and neglectful. Yeah, yeah. yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Honestly, honestly, I heard that and I was like, that is so a fucking like like that is my experience of people from the deep south, including family members. That is what they do. They are very nice and lovely to your face, and as soon as they think that it's going to serve them to do to do otherwise, they flip. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I just, my guess was is that, um, where is it? I said here. <sighs> I said, I was in Magician's Nibbling. I just, Annie is very harsh here. Was she just lashing out because everybody was kind of getting at her about it? So mm-hmm. I just, I just wondered. Um, yeah, but it was sort of an interesting. And then um, I did have some questions because Gimlet keeps barking. And I'm like, well, where the fuck was this dog? <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing. I was wondering, like, when she heard the barking when she was like, yeah, yeah, it says here, Gimlet barking outside the ice cream shop. I'm like, well, where was the dog? And then I I made a note on this. So Gimlet barked on the lunar level. Where is the dog? Well, Shaw was chasing suit makers in the service tunnels. I'm like, where is this dog? In the service tunnels. In the service tunnels is what I is what I understood. Like because Just running person, around I, randomly. Well, the persons, the, this the, the fake Holden and whatever, they're they're um they are maneuvering around by being able to enter in using Niles, um fog like uh, identity things. So uh, they're going through all the service tunnels and that's how they're getting around so quickly and no one's seeing them. So I assumed that, that, that he was keeping the dog in the service tunnel. He was moving the dog around with him because he couldn't leave the dog in one place. Uh, I thought. Niles nicked off with the dog. I just assumed that the the, the dog was in the box. That's what box. I assumed too. too. A box. Yeah. Niles' the box. box that they oh, open at the end. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, that's right. why I kept thinking when they found it, it said, oh, we found, you know, we found um, Yuki and his twin, by the way, um, his, um, has everyone seen most of uh, Chris Nolan's um, Memento? Uh, not Memento. Um, Prestige. Has everyone seen Prestige? Okay. Yeah. Matt. Matt. 
Yeah, you know what I'm talking about there. Did mm-hmm. you get those vibes? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, yeah, when Yuki uh, takes them over to the box and then they find like there's a whole breathing apparatus and I'm pretty sure the dog was in there. So I was like going, so where was this dog? Because it was Niles Nick the dog and I don't know how they timed the whole you know, shutting off the power and he stabbed himself and the dog got out, you know, when that all well, went I down. I assumed that Niles was the one that was at the door and yeah. gave him and, the and, scissors and, 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 like, and, 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 and did the power the shut dog. down. Mm. Yeah, and I presume Niles took the dog because Niles was a smuggler and he thought he could get money for the dog. Yeah. So that's yeah. why like I was so confused. And went into the service corridor and that's yeah. where the fur was. But I don't know if it was like a recording of the dog and it was try- they were trying to like distract oh, Tesla. Mm, yeah. Or if that's it a good was point. Something like that. Like if it was yeah. like, like if they had recorded the dog and then that's a good you know, point. they were playing, like he was standing in places to like play it or had left things in places to play it mm. to like try and distract her from what she was trying to do. Yes. I thought yes. that someone was using a recording yes. of the dog. And that's why we kept hearing it. That's why she heard it in random places and couldn't see them anywhere. And Gimlet wasn't coming to her when she called. Mm. And it was really clear throughout the whole book that Gimlet was really like she came when she was called. But, yeah, yeah. No, that's a good. That's a good theory. I like that. Yeah. That was my that theory. Yeah. We yeah. don't really work. Like we never really work out what why we randomly heard dogs. Either that or. Holden is also really good at imitating dogs. <laughs> maybe, but again, like because he's good at imitating. I mean, maybe you can imitate yeah, a dog bark. My assumption was that it was something that was making the sound of Gimlet. Yeah. To try and distract Tesla, whether it was fake Holden or a recording, yeah. it was. Yeah. So she was always being distracted from the tasks. She was. She was like being. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that's good. Yeah. It could that be was fake my Holden. theory. <laughs> 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 I love it. I love it. I do a really um, good fake dog bark, but I can't do it here because it's super loud. Oh, you anyway, and, and it works better in person. Okay. <laughs> um, well, I demand a demo next time I see you. Yep. <laughs> I'll do it. Uh, okay. Yep. So I talked to you about. I, um, thank you. This is helpful because Sarah, because I've listened. I'm on my third listen, and there's just these bits where I just go, I don't have a law that I can kind of yeah. go back to, but I think that. Is, is there's yeah. some good stuff in the same way you were saying where is everybody standing on this balcony <laughs> like i don't get it yeah <laughs> where is this balcony yeah and um, i mean, don't forget like everyone was up for dibs for being the killer from the very beginning because she didn't yeah. until the absolute end who who actually was behind everything which is why we don't know where annie was because that would have been something that she was leaving open until she decided the killer was not annie um, yeah. Because it it oh it lines up and he goes to the bathroom you know and there's an out of order sign like it all and the, yeah and she went to them. go to work for Jolna like she worked for Jolna's Industries after yeah. it's like what did she do after yeah yeah that yeah, yeah, no, makes much more sense now so that's that's that is good um, I felt sorry for Josie she poor Josie they lost a really good bartender she got a face yeah. full of needles mm. <laughs> yeah mm. yeah the one who could actually do make a martini. <laughs> I know, yeah. I know. I was like, oh, that was that's a bit that's a bit much. Um, um I have some quotes, but I also just wanted to touch upon Tesla's Tesla's actual like character in terms of the privilege that she's grown up with and yeah. knows. Yep, 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 and yep. whether it I honestly have to say she didn't ring true as somebody who would have been from that much money and That's background and privilege. So I was listening like, to, to that. I was actually listening to an interview between Mary Robin, MRK, and um, Hank Green about mm. this book. And they actually, they were talking about how they, this Tesla and the way that she uses her privilege and how sometimes she feels icky about it, even though she still does it. And sometimes she just, full on debutante kind of thing and she doesn't even notice. And apparently they they were basing this off of people they knew. So this is a, this is a this is a this is an amalgamation of several people who came from not privileged, later on got privilege. Yeah. And that's reason. that's yeah. the key because this is a person who's so I the best person I can equate to this to is royalty, right? And having listened to, you know, someone who's come from She's been famous her entire life. Like they said, she was the literal poster child for Crane Industries. Like mm. this is, this is like 
the Hiltons, right? Mm, this is yeah. if you think about Paris Hilton, if you think about Prince Harry, like that, they do their lives aren't like anybody else's. The, the only person I could actually in my head equate her to her like going okay she seemed normal enough as I kept comparing her to kind of like Taylor Swift and she was very Taylor okay. Swift but because Taylor Swift works her fucking ass off and is talented but hasn't has come from some privilege but not the amount of you know money and wealth she has now mm-hmm. but I kind of was like because you know Tesla was a rocket no robotics scientist Robotic. not a rocket scientist yeah. yeah so I was like okay she's not she's not just living off the cash flow. She's actually gone off and done something with her brain. But she did that thing where she says, daddy always told me. And I'm like, I really hate it when people refer to their parents as daddy when they're not eight years old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah when you're old, if you're calling someone daddy, that should be not the relationship you have with your father. Yeah. That's a very yeah. Southern thing to do. That's a very it's mild, a Southern yeah. thing. It's fine. Yeah. It is, it's no, no, no. But, but like, be, don't forget, MRK is very Southern and it does still right. stick in with what she does. I mean, that's a very right. common thing that you still call mama and daddy. Um, because, and it's this very, this, 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 it's a big deal to be daddy's girl, like in the South. Your your mama's boy and your daddy's girl, and it's not a derogatory thing. It's it's supposed to be this. You have a wonderful relationship with the opposite gender. You know, whatever. whatever. It's gonna work for other cultures, but that's a thing. So I think that it probably doesn't read that way to other people. Probably not to the author. But it is. Yeah, like- I mean, she wasn't southern. Like I remember, I've just gone through Mad Men again, mm-hmm. and the um, there's a character Lee Garnett Jr and his father and they are from the south they're tobacco people right and he's always like daddy always taught me you know this and yeah. you know well, well daddy and i i'm okay with that because i can hear it in the accent yeah 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 yeah. I'm like you know that's part of the culture like he he's a 50 year old man and he talks about you know daddy yeah. daddy's not gonna you know and i kind of oh, okay with that um but yeah i think it's like hearing I yeah like, I, like even like um in the, what's it like um what's it uh clueless and share refers to yeah. daddy you're like oh it's just great to me so much anyway it's just one of those things but that was something I wanted to see what I I get it because if she did write someone from that much background and privilege we wouldn't like them we wouldn't be able to connect with mm-hmm. them um and I also thought uh, and I also was like going how the met like the person she's you know got married to who seems remarkably normal a bit of a yeah. star I thought that was a good a good reveal though that he had a tv show and he was a bit of a celebrity in his own right like, yes okay. but well, it was interesting yeah. he didn't come from he didn't grow up in it where she did which is I felt like yeah. well, he, sort of balanced, he sort of balanced her yeah. out because usually mm-hmm. when she would go on those like very privileged she was so upset she wasn't thinking anymore and she was throwing her privileged weight around and he'd be like just don't it's not yeah. like <laughs> yeah I yeah. also wonder if her accident and the PTSD that she suffered and had to do work, I wonder if the person that she is now post that mm. is more humbled and more able to, Possibly. because she's killed, she's literally killed people and she will, she'll live with that for the rest of her life. And that's something that has humbled her. And, you know, she's been through the ringer with it. And I wonder if that's, brought her down to earth a bit like you said that she was so Iron Man. Before, they can never have been partners whereas now they're able to meet somewhere yeah. in the middle yeah yeah I'm actually really curious about how long it's been since the injury and mm. why she's still in so much pain like having that much of a big fusion surgery and having a deep brain stimulator to control it was pain eight years and still it was eight having years. that much pain yeah is just, it was eight years I'd like to see medically what yeah. they've done with her spine I was I was kind of under the impression that really it was like in if it was in our time she would have died like you know what I mean or been mm-hmm. paralyzed but because of medical advancements they've mm-hmm. able, they've been able to yeah. she can walk and she's alive but I was getting the impression also that it's um or I was thinking it was something to the equivalent of like nowadays they'll put rods up someone's back if yeah they, I think she they, did say that, that yeah there was that it, so, yeah. Well, I mean it sounds like she's had um, multi-level fusion, mm-hmm. which is basically what they'll do is they'll use um, a cage device to sort of fuse two vertebrae together, and that mm-hmm. cage has some flexibility but nowhere near the amount of flexibility that your mm-hmm. actual spine has. Yeah. Um, and it sounds like she's had probably a good portion of her lumbar spine and maybe even some of her thoracic mm-hmm. all done, and 
you wouldn't have that done now. Like the yeah. maximum that I've ever seen is four. I know you can go up to 12, but 12 is a lot and you would only do it in a very yeah. severe situation. So I, more just medically, I'd like to know mm. yeah. what the fusion yeah. device is that they're using and yeah. really just how the deep brain stimulator is sort of working because obviously it's not something that we have now that they're using for pain. Like they have deep brain stimulators that they're using for Parkinson's and that sort of stuff. Which is actually what she based it on. She based that yeah. idea on because she's got family that has Parkinson's. Yeah, I think she was. Yeah, yeah. Mum her mom, or her, her friend. Her mum. Her mum. Yeah. 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 yeah, just I'd like to know more of the medicine of it. It was really yeah. interesting to sort of read about and especially I want to know more about what the fusion is that she had and what her injuries were to sort of mm. work out what's causing so much pain definitely it also included her hip there was something so it was like most of her spine and down into her hip on her left side because it all the pain goes shooting through her left leg um, right. and there was definitely a reference to um misfires from nerves as well um with that, and that makes a lot because of she's wow, yeah. she would have like um crush yeah. some of the nerves yep. in her spine. Yeah. 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 And yeah. the pain going down one leg may just be that it was on a particular on that particular yeah. side of her spine. It may not even be that there was any damage to the leg at all. Yeah. Uh, it no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's it sounds like every that what she feels in her leg, like her leg works, but it's her back that doesn't work because all of the exercises she does is to help with back flexibility. But she yeah. feels like when it's really bad, it goes down her leg, it, it causes her leg, leg yeah. to mis misbehave, but but otherwise her leg is fine. She has the the cane because of the hip thing, because they do refer to her hip being crushed and part of her her movement. Like she can't run pro the same way that a normal person can because her hip's locked up. A bit. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah it's I like fascinating. That. <laughs> that whole that whole thing. Yeah. I did like how um, kind of what David was saying before, how the PTSD stuff was really well described, but I also mm -hmm. liked how she worked on describing the pain, like the colours, like it was um, yeah. it was really good. And I and and then the flames licking one side or whatever. And I was like, okay, I I, I like this visualization to help people understand how it is all encompassing. Mm -hmm. Like, so I thought I thought I really loved how she wrote that because I thought that's a really good way to sort of access. Mm -hmm an understanding of someone who when that happens that's all you can see or feel is like you know so I thought it was really good and using different depictions to help communicate like grade gradations <laughs> of pain and stuff because generally like what you like the most common one is white heart pain and that's meant to be like the ultimate you've just been shot somewhere or something like that and you feel a white heart pain where she gives you all these different colors and textures and yeah no, it's good. It was it really says good. to me like this person lives with pain all the time, and so they can really tell for themselves where the you know where the spectrum yeah. is. Um, yeah. It's it's really good for people who don't experience that kind of pain yeah. because yeah. a lot of people like you know they'll be like oh, you know you'll go to emergency and they'll say what's your pain level from one to ten, but that's really not descriptive mm. because like mm. someone's. 10 could be another person's five yeah like, so you feel like if you don't say 10 they're not going to take you seriously <laughs> like, yeah. but but then again if you're still a functioning human being and you say it's a 10 they think you're lying yeah yeah mm -hmm. so, where, where maybe you're just someone who pushes is used to pushing through it like yeah. like if you're like if you were in that much pain all of the time like being a functioning human being and having nine ten out of ten pain would be your normal like mm -hmm. being used to that level of pain even though that pain for another person would be indescribable and they would be non-functioning yeah but yeah mm. i really i really liked the way that she described pain mm. because it's yeah. really useful for people who haven't experienced that kind of pain before or yeah. even that yeah. significant amount of pain before to like really understand what the character is going through and what their yeah. body feels like. Mm. Similarly, I felt with the PTSD depictions, I was like, um, having watched people literally go through them sitting next to me from a trigger that I didn't even notice was going to happen. Like, because then you try, right? Like, you know, people tend, like, people with PTSD will make a list of triggers, but they have surprise ones all the time. Mm. And, um, yeah, and her, and how she was going through it in her head, um, like, all of her, 
her talking herself through it and like walking whenever she whenever her dog wasn't around and such yeah it was really very very accurate so um, yeah cool yeah which I'm oh, um, not surprised she does really well at depicting mental struggles <laughs> like, yeah yeah and I, I was just reflecting on just to go back to something we were talking about before about I think the relentless moon is the one with the um that's the mm. spy novel run right mm -hmm. I think part of the reason I probably rate that one higher than this mm. one is simply because we've spent so much time with those characters like yeah. the, the pilot we've known since the beginning that's um mm. what's his you know like and his wife's on board and we're like we feel something like we know people on that plane we're very okay. worried about them we feel for them so these are all new characters and so I think that's possibly part of it is that we know who this you know we, we, this is a universe um I know and I've been in and these are characters I know and love and I care mm. about them where these are just kind of all new people and I don't know them yet <laughs> so sure. you know um so that was just something and I had something I just wanted to mention because I thought um Matt would have also got sat there and nodded a little bit um is that when Shell brings his own, like when Maria, he's making coffee for Maria, and Maria's like, you know, you can order that stuff. And he's like, uh, no, no. No. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> what, like, what you have on here on board is not coffee. Yeah, no. This no. is coffee. I was like, and then she's, like, she's all like, damn you for introducing me to this <laughs> thing. And now I'm like yeah. spoiled and yeah. I can never drink the other stuff again. Yeah. I was very much like going, oh yes, like I am I'm with Shao. You you take your own coffee and you all the accoutrement with you, you know. So <laughs> I, <laughs> um and then I wanted just to finish like here are some of my favorite fantine quotes. <laughs> Memoring lobsters, by the way. I don't know what memoring is, but that sounds great. <laughs> um that she likes farts a lot because there's holy fart weasels on a flying carpet. <laughs> that sounds great. But there's also frozen farts on a stick, which sounds like something your kids would say, Kirsty. <laughs> it's not as delicious the, as it sounds. Yeah. <laughs> and St. Joan's flaming dildo. Yeah, I want to know good. what St. <laughs> Joan was up to because like, <laughs> they were just and they, oh, they were just great. I was just oh, she's the much needed, you know, um, comic relief. <laughs> yeah. Also, back to that, because Lisa's not here, the bit on the stairs where she's reading off the list, and so we're hearing, like, we're getting we're getting these interest versions of who might be the killer. Mm. And she's walking down, and she's having these internal thoughts of what, and she's trying to, and Tesla's trying to figure out what's happening down below. That was so cinematic. It was so nicely written. I loved that. With, I, I Is that the, the bit where her hand held that twice? Yes, and then her end, she, and as soon as they say, um, yeah, Wise, it was not Wisner, it was someone else, they, they, someone else's name, I don't remember who it was, and um, her knee buckles and her handheld goes flying, and she, and because she's trying to grab a hold, she hits the, the volume button or the speaker and button. And she's like, <laughs> yeah. 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 It, goes, oh, it was, it was very moment. good. I just, I loved yeah, it. Like that, in that particular case, like that I could just see it happening and it was so cinematic with the way everything's coming together and timed out I was like those beats right on it was very good agreed it was very very good very good yeah um I liked and I I, I really I'm not someone who wants to go on cruise ships because no. I uh, I get very seasick <laughs> so I'm just terrified about like that and but and also for the same reason this works is because I don't like the idea of being trapped with 2,000 of my best friends <laughs> in one place. Yeah. But I did like this as like, and I watch like I watch a, a cruising channel because I find it just fascinating and I, I thought it was such a yeah. great location. Oh. <laughs> that terrified me. It was just a face appeared well, in the back. 922. Are you ready for bed, eh? Yes. 922. Um, I have to go and say goodnight um, to the kid. Okay. Um, and it was, yeah, that kind of like we're stuck in this location. And I think I said it before, like the um, murder on the Orient Express, yeah. you know, mm. it just, it was, you know, like, yeah. So I, I enjoyed it. And I just, like the little moments where she said, you know, you know are you ready to get fit, fit, fit? Join! Uh, the, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the yeah. announcer was fun. I have been <laughs> on that like, Come on, the promenade! And I, and I was like, this is exactly what it's like. Oh, like, God. Yeah. 
more reasons to not be on a cruise. I can't get past the environmental damage. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, um, I enjoyed the location. And also, I'm just like, it's in space. It's cool. And I like the way she described, like, how they had the pictures up of the star fields, but not really, because otherwise you'd feel really sick. <laughs> yeah. That was good. That was very good. Yeah. Did we did we talk ourselves out? I think so. I, I had all the questions. You guys explained it. I now can listen and go, oh yeah, that's Holden faking being um, Gimlet. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> I was very but everyone, except for the Matt and Kirsten have left, so I can't check that they don't have anything more to talk about. <laughs> <sighs> Uh, yeah, I talked about poor Josie. Yeah, know, yeah, and he stuff. didn't get to—he didn't get to talk about. It. I think he ran out of energy before we got to that. But that was the thing that David Shig was really frustrated with was the privilege, like watching Tesla throw around her privilege. Um, yeah, and that was nothing compared to somebody who would actually be from yeah. that. You know. Yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like if being that we were seeing it through Tesla's eyes, I felt a little more empathetic about her being so angry and upset and fe and being a woman and feeling like no one was listening to her. Like, whereas if I was watching it from the outside, it probably would look very different to me and I'd be really annoyed like with someone doing what she was doing and it would probably look a bit more like someone shucking their privilege around. Um, yeah. I can still see that yeah. that's what was happening, but I just felt a little more, I, I think I gave her a little more leeway because I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a sore point with me if I feel like I'm not being listened to because it happens all the time anyway. Yeah, um, I, I, but I did also feel for her, like when Wiser was saying, you know, like you, are you going to sit in your expensive hotel room drinking vodka and everything? And it's kind of like if like be, it, there was this bias there of kind of like, yeah, just because you're a suspect he's a suspect he's not proven to be a murderer so yeah yeah, yeah. yeah well, and I was pissed so off about that it's like he's paid for, like exactly what Fonte is like yeah because they paid for it just they've paid for this that uh, that you know in a service they pay for they get things in return for it and yeah I'm that still I, I think yeah, that, that's to a point I'm okay with that like I have an issue with why Weiser was obviously the villain he was not following justice and protocol like he should not have been treating them the way that he did he obviously was just like I'm a cowboy and I'm gonna do my own thing and serve my own justice how I want because I'm head of security but I am not willing to go so far as to say, okay, well, just because they have the money to throw around, they get extra privilege and lo the law doesn't apply to them. Uh, but they had no. already paid for stuff. They're not necessarily the extra privilege. They just wanted to be in a in back in yeah, like, like providing them like with the equivalent and stuff. Like they should that should have happened because that's part of the entire system. Like, yeah, and he, uh, yeah, and that's um, the bit that annoyed me is that Wiser was having this issue with it, and I that pisses me off when, yeah. like, other people sit there and say, "Oh, look at you," you know, like it, it's I'm wallowing in the dirt, so everybody should kind of thing. Yeah, like, yeah, uh, no. Like, so, so her with Wiser is kind of different. I sort of put that in a different box because he yeah. already was not following protocol and doing what he was meant to do. Um, but he, was, he had a bias. He had yeah. a bias. Of, yeah, about yeah, yeah. Rich people, yeah, it's more when she was, which in, we all have, we absolutely all have. But he shouldn't have been doing that job if he did. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's like yeah. Yeah, I he, did should, think he that, should not have been allowed in that job. Sorry, no. I did think think that made it his character interesting. That like you could see that he had this chip on his shoulder because, and it's almost like you can see that the the chip on his shoulder is valid in a way because we've all seen, you know, people with money get away with murder because they have money, mm -hmm. and. And it's almost like you can kind of see why he feels yeah. that way, but also like you've taken it too far and you that just because that is very like you can't throw out the whole justice system just because you've seen it not work in the past. Mm. You know what I mean? Like it was, it, I thought that as much as I disliked him, I did think that that part was interesting because I'm like, well, yeah, we've all seen people who are rich or yeah. famous get away with crime because they're rich or famous. And you can see why he jumped to that conclusion. You know what I mean? Yeah, that doesn't exclude him. That doesn't, like, allow him to beat the crap out of a potential. Oh, no, I'm not because, saying what he did was okay. Like, but yeah, I'm yeah, saying it like, made him an interesting villain because the yeah, most made interesting him villains are ones where you can kind of see why they are the way they are, even though you're like, well, it's still yeah. you did the wrong thing and you shouldn't have done that. 
but you can kind of see why, yeah. like, because villains, especially well-written villains, don't think that they're the villain, yeah. right? Yeah. He yeah. doesn't think that he's doing the wrong thing. He thinks he's this just, he's serving justice and stopping, you know, the, mm-hmm. the rich and famous person from getting away with something they shouldn't get away with. And in his mind, he's the hero. Yeah. 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 You know, and yeah. that's, that's always the most interesting villains is the ones that they think they're the hero. Yeah. They and- don't think they're the villain. Yeah. 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 And it's interesting the fact that, you know, that whole thing about, rich famous rich people getting away with murder Mm -hmm. is often because they can have good legal representation then Mm. you've got people who are who who don't have good legal representation being accused of murder and not being able to you know like that's that is that that it all comes down to that so I was very much like when he stops her not being able to talk to the lawyer um I mean that that is that's really what it came to it comes down to it's like yeah that is what their money buys them it buys them legal stuff you know a, a, a legal ability and if it had been someone else they would not be able to do any of this you know like you would have just thrown them in the brig and they wouldn't have realized what their rights are you know just yeah um anyway um i just it was it was it was good and interesting um and it was really um anyway i don't know what i'm talking about it's late here and uh you know i can't believe he's still going that's amazing <laughs> i mean it's late here it's so really late there yeah yeah anyway Sorry. i think i think we're done though yeah i think we've otherwise uh, i'll just yeah, talk to myself out okay all right yeah. i'm gonna stop recording so thank you for anyone who kept with us this long this was a really nice long discussion which was great um do we know what we're doing in january i forgot to look up the book it's January. Uh, yes, yeah. It's Kim's pick, and it's, oh, it's what you're looking what for. What you're looking in... for in the library. Thank yeah. you. Who's it by? Uh, give sure. me a second. It's by Nik- Nikiko Ayo- Ayama. Okay. I, I, I'm butchering that. It's M I C H I K O A O Y A M A. Ayama. Yeah, Ayama. Okay. Excellent. Um. Yes. So that one. That one can be cats in books and libraries. That sounds great. Uh, and I think it's kind of a short read too. So nice one to start the year off with. Nice. Excellent. Okay. So bye and we'll see you all another time.